Hi, it's me and this is episode 29 of Built From Scratch. And this is the first one of um, the new format, which is as follows. Um, I am going to talk about each of my day's work since the last time I made one of these. Um, but once I've finished doing that, I then come back to the start, chronologically speaking, and put an introduction together uh, where I summarise what I've just reminded myself of as being the work of the last however long it's been. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, <clears throat> I've just finished recording the days from, actually I forget the dates already, but um, over the last about three and a half weeks. And I can therefore tell you that this time period has ended up being the time of niche and keyword research, basically. Um, and that is something that I thought I was kind of past, but I am glad that I revisited it. So <clears throat> to step back a tiny bit, um, at the start of this period, um, I bought uh, a membership to the Authority Hacker Pro course. And the I had a look around it, the content that they've got in there, um, thinking that I was pretty much going to be stepping straight into some of the more advanced elements of it. Um, but the first thing I wanted to do was learn a little bit about how to just structure a Amazon Affiliates page. Which in terms of where I'm at with my sort of understanding of online marketing is really quite basic, but I hadn't done it before. And you know, sometimes it doesn't matter if you understand X, Y, Z, you have to sometimes make sure you've understood ABC properly before you move on. Um, and it turns out that where they have that kind of content is in their um, authority site system um, module, which is actually a separate product they make, uh, which is cheaper and more basic. It's their sort of gateway product, um, but it is wrapped up in the Authority Hacker Pro membership too. So I had access to it and had a look at it. Um, and some of the first work you do in that module is niche analysis uh, combined with keyword analysis. They're, they're sort of locked into each other in many ways. Um, and because I'm the type of person, I, I like to do things quite thoroughly and from the start where possible. Um, <clears throat> so I decided I would put a bit of time into going through that process despite the fact that I felt I knew what niche I wanted to get into and there wasn't really any chance of that changing. Um, and once I'd finished doing that process, in fact, with the LED niche, um, I wasn't put off exactly, although it didn't quite fit in with the way they do their analysis. Uh, but the, the figures that were coming out of the keyword research looked okay. However, <clears throat> it put me in this whole uh, frame of mind of questioning the pros and cons of um, niches or topics or industries or whatever you want to call them in terms of where you, you aim at with your business. Um, and the end of the story is I've actually jumped twice since I last recorded a Built From Scratch. First from LEDs in general, like I was gonna be involved, as you know if you've been listening to any of these, in anything to do with LEDs, any product that uses them is potentially something I was gonna write about. I moved from that to LED projectors. So a serious narrowing of the niche. Um, and I've since jumped again 
a smaller jump this time to projectors. So whilst a month ago I would have struggled to believe this, the fact is I'm now sitting here today having completely dropped LEDs from what I'm doing to concentrate purely on projectors as my top level broad search term. And I'm feeling really good about that. Um, I actually like projectors uh, as a, a thing to use in my normal life. I've messed around with them previously for work-based uh, projects. Um, and I think they'll be a good commercial niche to get into. Um, it's kind of small enough that I think it will be possible to get a foothold, but it's big enough to um, do quite a lot of work in. Uh, there, were, there's, there were plenty of affiliate opportunities, including Amazon, uh, but also if I do move into retail, obviously, projectors sell in considerable volumes um, so that's certainly an option and then <clears throat> it helps me move into um, the realms of potentially doing a sort of installation and or event hire service so it serves all the kind of purposes um, that I wanted to serve thinking about LEDs in fact the weird thing is is those sort of tiers of service that I've just laid out are really what I'm aiming for in the future and they have been from the start and that's kind of why I chose LEDs to be the basis of the site because the the big screens that you can make and that I'm hopefully going to own in the future and hire out to events are made of LED panels so that was the sort of direction I was thinking um, but projectors kind of serve that purpose just as well, if not better. Because the fact is, from the perspective of anyone thinking of hiring a big screen for an event, they don't know, probably don't know, and almost certainly don't care what technology is being used to build the screen with. They just care about, does it work, does it look good, and how much is it gonna cost? So, I really don't need the site to be all about LEDs. I just need it to be about something related to that area of work and for it to be sort of commercially vibrant and hopefully interesting and I think projectors definitely will be. There's loads to write about um, both in terms of commercial intent and more kind of interesting inf informational stuff. Um, I like them and I've got loads of ideas already that I've actually had stacked up for ages about how I might use the products to do um, PR type stuff or link building or various other ideas around them. Um, so I'm really happy with that choice. I'm uh, excited to move on with it now. Um, but that has been most of the month because it takes quite a long time to do that kind of research. Um, it, it, at each stage, at the LED stage, then the LED projector stage, and then the standalone projector stage, I had to do a fair bit of keyword research, putting things in spreadsheets, categorizing those spreadsheets, and it takes a fair bit of time. Um, I've done a few other bits and pieces, which you can listen to if you want to listen to the rest of this episode. Um, <clears throat> But I think the only other thing that's significant is that just in the last couple of days, um, I have actually finished that keyword research um, stage for the projector site, as it now is. Um, and I have finally moved on to content. Um, that's primarily, primarily in the form of a video so far uh, to do with making a homemade projector um, using a light bulb, uh, which was quite a fun little thing to do for an afternoon. <clears throat> and I'm about to write that up and publish it as the first bit of content that I've made that is not built from scratch. Um, so that's great. I've been talking about moving on to content for, well, it feels like forever now. I've finally actually done it. Um, and so <clears throat> I'm quite confident now that next time I make a build from scratch, I'll be able to tell you about quite a lot more content that I've put together. Um, 
So is there anything else that I need to mention at this stage? Quickly, the quantitatives um, are just as flat as ever. Um, the sites get no meaningful traffic yet, uh, and therefore I'm not making any money yet. Uh, in fact, the only thing of any significance is that my expenditure uh, for Wave to the is now up to uh, £3,647, which is starting to feel like a significant chunk of money. Um, the majority of that is the roughly 2300 it cost me to sign up to Authority Hacker Pro. Um, so if you're listening to this uh, being someone who is maybe considering starting up an online business, uh, especially if you're going down the sort of low uh, capital startup costs um, affiliate marketing route, don't be too scared off. Uh, I needn't have bought that course. Uh, and if I hadn't, I'd still just be uh, on around £1,300, which is really still nothing too much. And in fact, one of the things they talk about in the authority site system by Authority Hacker is um, that you can do things even cheaper than I've done them so far by, uh, for example, of the £1,300 I've spent, something like 500 of that now is my monthly Ahrefs subscription, which you don't need. You could sign up to it for just a couple of months uh, and then cancel it once you've finished your keyword research if you wanted to. Um, so I'm not too scared of that amount of money. I think the Authority Hacker membership will pay for itself in the long run. So that's fine. Um, and, and then just quick general life update. Um, we are now only about two or three weeks away, I think, from having this extension finished on our house, which means we'll be able to all move home again um, and I will be able to go back to using the um, attic at my mum's house as an office, which is rather more spacious and quiet than it is here, certainly when there are the builders around. So that'll be nice. Um, obviously, at some point in the future, if this does start making money, I'm kind of looking forward to being able to afford to rent some actual commercial premises, um, but that won't be happening anytime soon. I'm quite happy working at my mum's. She's happy for me to be there, and it's just free space at the moment, so that's great. Uh, and that is it. So I'm gonna sign off from the intro. Uh, so if you keep listening, it will be the daily breakdown of the tasks that I've been doing. Um, <clears throat> Listen to it if you want. Okay, see you later. Hello, it's me, uh, and it, this is the latest uh, episode of Built From Scratch. And it's the 6th of November 2020, which means it's a good uh, two and a half, three weeks since I last did this, um, which is great, really, because that is the new plan. Uh, and I uh, am feeling pretty happy with that being the case. So, um, Firstly, just to explain a couple of things, I, uh, I've got a couple of cats and uh, one of them is sitting on me right now and I don't want to chuck him off uh, because yesterday was firework night over here in the UK uh, and he didn't come home for the evening. I think he was probably scared hiding under a bush somewhere. Um, so he's just come in about half an hour ago uh, and I don't want to risk annoying him at this point so he's going to stay here uh, for the duration. Second, I don't know if you can see or maybe these glasses are hiding it but I've got various bits of charcoal uh, on my face uh, because I've just finished having a fire in the back garden um, to get rid of a load of waste that the, uh, the well garden waste that the builders created uh, making our extension. And I simply haven't had time to wash it off uh, because I've got to head off in a minute. So if there are any weird uh, black marks on my face, that's why. Right, so the plan is, <clears throat> I am gonna go through the notes that I've made um, over the last uh, two and a half weeks or whatever it is, uh, but I'm gonna do it in a very rapid, relatively superficial manner uh, compared to the first 29 episodes, I think it is, of this. So, here we go. Okay, uh, 20th of October, I wrote the Diary of an Entrepreneur article, which you should be able to find on the site. Um, the idea being that um, I want people to find... Oh, the cat's gone. Um, 
There you go. Uh, I want people to be able to find built from scratch and the reason why I imagine they might be searching for this kind of stuff is because they want to know um, you know, what it's like step by step trying to start up a business and therefore be an entrepreneur um, and the best, in fact the only phrase I could find doing a bit of keyword research that had any volume in the kind of, in that area was diary of an entrepreneur. Obviously, there's things like how to start up a business, but I was, there's loads of competition for that kind of thing. So I was looking for something specifically to do with this kind of daily documentation style. Uh, so there you go, Diary of an Entrepreneur. Uh, that was quite good fun to write because it didn't require any kind of research. Uh, and I was pleased to find that uh, I could write about 1,100 words, I think it was, in an hour or so. Um, without there being too many typos or without it requiring too much editing. So that was good. Um, I also decided to ditch transcriptions and keep tightly focused on LEDs initially uh, to help Google see what to rank you for. Uh, so in other words, I decided to stick to LEDs as the focus of the website to aid relevancy in SEO parlance. Um, and I also decided to not stop doing transcriptions of these videos uh, because it takes a while, it adds virtually zero value, uh, I expect, uh, suspect, um, and therefore it's not going to be done anymore. Uh, 21st of October, uh, I wrote that I started to do some keyword research for a handful of basic articles about LEDs. Uh, the plan was to do this before I got stuck into the Authority Hacker Pro content. Um, just so I would have them written even in basic form that would need editing and sorting out just to get over the psychological barrier of doing them and uh, it's kind of useful to learn things by doing them your own potentially bad way before you then learn how to do them properly. Um, <clears throat> I also that day checked out some competitors for one of the phrases that I was going to start writing for uh, and found that they were surprisingly high quality sites uh, for fairly low volume uh, phrases. Um, however, I then stuck the, I think there was two sites I was looking at, I put them in Ahrefs for some competitor analysis and found that they uh, had a whole load of spammy backlinks and not much in the way of good backlinks. Um, and in short kind of got over being uh, too scared about them as competitors uh, and just recognized that essentially if you write some decent content and just got a handful of okay links uh, for the type of fairly low volume low competition phrases i was looking at um, you would probably do okay 22nd of october um, decided to have a look at the auth uh, the authority site system which is the authority hacker basic course um, simply because having had a quick look at it, I realised that there was probably a fair bit of content in there which is relevant to where I'm at at the moment. And although I consider myself reasonably knowledgeable about this stuff, uh, I'm far from an expert. Um, so I thought it might be worth going through from the start, admittedly with a view to trying to go through it quite quickly uh, and then get up to the kind of level of stuff that Authority Hacker Pro covers. Oh, the cat's back. Do you want to say hello? Obviously, people on the podcast won't benefit from this, but here he is. This is Blaze. He's not much of a show-off, but he does like a cuddle, so he can go there. Um, so I've just said that I decided to do the, um, the niche and keyword research sections, um, despite the fact that I've essentially decided what I'm doing. Um, I just figured it would be a worthwhile exercise to put a few hours into it. So I compared LED, outdoor LED screens, projectors, uh, and also randomly fishing, uh, just so I could compare some different niches. Um, yeah, that's all that's worth saying about that. 23rd of October, not much in the way of notes. I've just written, I got rid of the UK keyword research bits. Um, I didn't actually mention this, but uh, when I was doing the niche research the day before, I doubled everything up, so it was a US and a UK version. Uh, but to be honest, the whole thing was taking quite a long time and I didn't think it was worth it, so I got rid of them. Um, the, the fact is, I don't know if I write this in my notes later, but actually I only spent a little bit of time doing the niche research in the end. 
Um, it was a sort of interesting exercise, but the truth is um, my position in terms of how long I've got to do this full time and and my experience and my sort of passion, well, I'll get back to that later, um, my sort of passion for the niche mean that I'm pretty much locked into it um, and, and can probably develop my website in a way that the person who Authority Hacker are targeting with their basic course um, is not me. Um, so I don't need to care too much about all the things they're talking about. Um, and, and I suppose what, I, I suspected that the sort of LED slash audio visual niche would be a decent one to go into. Um, and having done some of their <clears throat> processes to assess it, um, I wasn't put off. It, it wasn't matching all of their criteria perfectly, but it certainly wasn't too bad. So uh, very much linking on from that, uh, the 26th of October, I've written stressing a bit about how LED isn't a perfect match for authority site system criteria. I've got several sets of keywords in categories um, using uh, in or in Ahrefs, this is um, keyword difficulty of less than 16 and volume of more than 30, which is not a million miles off Gale's uh, keyword difficulty of 10 and volume of 100, uh, but in most of those categories, the average keyword difficulty is around 8, which is a bit high uh, compared to what he talks about. So I've then said, I got uh, Deck. This is a friend of mine who uh, heads up the SEO department of uh, an agency here in Sheffield called Evoluted. Um, I asked him to give me the entire US and UK uh, AH Ahrefs reports for the phrase best LED. Um, the reason I had to get in touch with him to do that is because I'm on the light subscription to Ahrefs, which means I can only print off a thousand lines of a report at any given time. Um, and this report had uh, 33,000 lines of uh, phrases. Um, so he had access to the agency subscription level, uh, which means he was able to make me a spreadsheet of the entire thing. Uh, so I've then put, hopefully this will help because I can now expand categories and hopefully end up with sets of phrases averaging more like one keyword difficulty. Uh, so even though they'll potentially have very low volume, ranking should be attainable. Uh, yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, basically what I'm saying is on the relatively small data set that I set that I had access to um, LED uh, or best LEDs is what I was specifically searching for was looking like a medium quality option uh, where I was hoping that if I had the full data set uh, it might look more doable. Uh, whilst I was chatting with Deck, he mentioned that his boss, a guy called Ash Young, um, is uh, doing a kind of similar, setting up a new online business and documenting it thing. So I spent a bit of time looking at that. Uh, quite an impressive chap doing a good effort. Uh, he's set up a website at carmats.co.uk uh, and he's doing drop shipping basically um, and he's only been doing it for a few months at this point and is achieving a good deal of success and making quite a lot of money already. Um, <clears throat> I didn't, I wasn't too put off by the fact that he's doing really well and I'm not <laughs> because he's gone for a very different model, he is considerably better resource than I am. He's experienced in the field, i.e. selling car mats. Um, and there are various other reasons why I, I don't have to feel too bad about the fact that he has started earning money so quickly and I'm not. Uh, so I've just considered it was an interesting exercise watching it. And what it did do is made me, well, it reminded me of the power of getting involved with physical products, you know, either by via drop shipping or actually buying stock and selling it or whatever. Um, so it just made me think, um, well, it didn't make me think anything. It just reminded me um, that that is a useful thing to consider doing uh, sooner rather than later. 
Uh, 27th of October, I started the big task of categorizing the 37,000 phrases. Uh, that's 37,000 across the US and UK reports for um, best LED. Found that Google Sheets uh, struggles to deal with um, chunks of data that size. Uh, well, it's either Google Sheets or perhaps much my broadband connection. Um, but so it took a couple of hours, I believe, if I remember rightly, just um, moving stuff from the um, CSV that I'd been given the data on into Google Sheets. Um, I then used a regular expression formula to speed up the processing of the lists. Um, regex is essentially uh, almost like a language, um, that, like a coding language that you can use to find strings that match certain criteria. Um, and I used it on the spreadsheet to allow me to choose a keyword that I thought was probably going to be worthy of uh, being a category um, and then finding uh, that keyword um, on anywhere within the spreadsheet uh, and categorizing it that way. Um, that was the, that was the whole of that day and into the next day as it happens. Uh, the next day being the 28th, where I've written, I got about 50 categories sorted yesterday. At current pace, I've probably got a full day to go before it's complete and it's going to be boring. Um, so trying to find a way to use ifs with regex <coughs> match. Sorry, I don't know what's up with me today. I can't speak properly. I think it's because I'm trying to do things quickly. Um, so what this is is, uh, I, I'd been using that regex formula uh, to find individual categories, but I found a way with the help of Stack Exchange as ever to use an ifs uh, st uh, formula in sheets uh, with that regex match um, so that I could import, I think I was doing about 30 categories at a time. Um, I still had to manually import the word that I wanted to base the category on and then I had to manually um, select all the groups of keywords once I've sort of filtered and sorted them and then move them into a different tab. So it didn't save me that much time, uh, but it just reduced the number of clicks, <clears throat> basically. And when you're doing that for hours, in fact, a couple of days at a time, um, it, it speeds things up and perhaps more importantly, it just makes you feel like you're not doing more than you need to or an incredibly, uh, boring job. Um, yep, that'll do for that day. Oh, actually, I just had a couple of other notes from that, that day. Um, an example of why it's worth putting all the effort in to sorting the 37,000 best LED phrases. Um, I've just come across about 30 phrases for uh, collars, LED collars. Um, with a US volume of around 400 a month, which is decent, certainly worth an article or two. Um, I suspect I may never have discovered that category had I looked at other sites for inspiration, which is another obvious way that you can find categories. Um, certainly if I'd have been looking at companies that do LEDs, uh, they tend to concentrate on actual sort of LED lights and products where the LED light is the main thing about it and they wouldn't be talking about uh, collars for cats and dogs. So I may well have missed that, but it's a, a category well worth looking at. Um, almost finished all the phrases with recorded volume by the end of the day. Uh, and it turns out Google Sheets have a maximum number of cells of 5 million, which was interesting to learn and uh, slightly annoying that I hit that limit because I then had to go through all the ones I've created and chop out all the blank cells just so I can use them in other, uh, in other tabs. 29th of October, uh, I've written a few notes here. I'm just going to quickly read through them. Spent the entire day categorizing phrases again. Um, explain that you were ordering by volume, then going from the top, deciding what the main word was and using regex to find any other phrase with that word. Yeah, okay, I've kind of mentioned that already. Uh, plus some manual additions based on knowledge of semantic matches. 
So in other words, if I knew that two categories were essentially the same category, I would search for them together. I stopped when I got to the end of anything uh, that had any volume noted in Ahrefs, uh, at which point the list had gone from 33,000 US-based phrases to just under 5,000. Sorry, did I say 33 or 33,000? Anyway, you know what I'm on about. It was down to 5,000. Those remaining phrases are just going to sit there for now. Um, so to clarify, these are phrases that are not showing any volume in Ahrefs. Uh, they must have got a volume of at least one over some period of time to exist there, uh, but it might be literally just one person wrote that ever. So they're not really worth uh, going for particularly. Um, I then took the deduplicated UK list, so in other words I'd uh, compared it with the US list and got everything, got rid of everything that was a duplicated phrase, um, and which started at 3.3 thousand, 3300, whatever you want to call it, uh, but after the deduplication was down to 1400, and then did the same thing of categorising everything, um, <clears throat> adding generally speaking, them to the same categories that had already been created for the states because um, obviously when you've got a much smaller data set there are, it's unlikely you're going to find new categories. I think out of, I think altogether there were 306 categories that I created from the US data and the UK data added three unique categories. Um, Oh yes, so total number of categories is 306, ranging from so few phrases, uh, you'll only get one article out of them, uh, to the top few, which will allow for maybe 10 to 20. Uh, on average, probably three. So let's say a thousand articles in total. Um, and for these sorts of basic affiliate articles, you can probably do two a day. So that's about two and a half years worth of work full time if you were to write every article um, generated by this research. Uh, talk about how you're going to choose first categories and how you're going to break the phrases into groups. Mm, well, no, I'm not going to talk about that right now. Uh, maybe in a bit. 30th of October. Um, had to finish up with the last couple of hours of categorization. Um, I've then written, <clears throat> the best thing about getting the 33,000 phrase list is that you are now confident you've recognized every subcategory that exists within best LEDs and realistically within LEDs total because when you're talking about 33,000 phrases, even if they do necessarily involve the word best, uh, they're probably going to uh, cover every category within the broader phrase of LEDs. The problem with the limits of the AHREF's light plan is that you either search broad and risk breaching the limit, which will mean lost key phrases, or you search narrow to stay in limits but then risk failing to identify entire categories. But the big list combined with your processing has now given you every meaningful category so you're able to do niche searches for other phrases within subcategories without that risk of disregarding areas. Um, <clears throat> I then decided that the first three content silos um, and I'm essentially meaning by silo a category um, the idea of writing content in silos is a fairly well-known idea now in terms of <clears throat> how you organise your site structure. Um, and yes, essentially my silos are going to match up with categories, I suspect, largely. Uh, I've decided that the first three are going to be based on the keywords best LED interview, best LED panel and best LED flashlight, respectively very low, medium and medium high competition phrases. Interview actually has zero keyword difficulty in and volume in Ahrefs, but it is worth the experiment and is currently interesting as the searches are to do with people doing interviews over the internet due to COVID. Uh, that's the end of the notes for to that day, uh, and I now know in hindsight that that was completely wrong. Uh, it turns out people, everything that exists on the internet to do with LED interview uh, is all to do with how you light an interview if you're filming one um, using LED lights. It's nothing to do with 
uh, doing job interviews remotely. Um, so I won't be doing that category, but then I won't be doing the other categories either. Um, and I'll get to that in just a minute, a couple more days to do first. 2nd of November, had yesterday off due to the kids getting sent home from nursery with a temperature. Uh, got a test that day, so hopefully you won't have to miss a second day. Straight on to the 3rd of November, spent the first half of the day catching up with various admin. Um, my wife was at home with the kids, it turns out, that day, so I didn't have to worry about that. And we got a negative COVID result uh, mid-afternoon, so there were, there were no more days off that week, which is this week. Um, so yeah, catching up with admin, uh, mostly not business related. <clears throat> Life really is busy at the moment, so quite a lot of stuff gets in the way. Um, second half of the day was considering and then putting aside the authority site system sections on styling your site. As I've already done this, I kind of got sucked into thinking this is fairly good stuff, so I kind of need to follow it, and then realised that if I were to follow what they were saying, having already set up a site, uh, it might possibly add some kind of value, but not really. It's more there for people who haven't done it before, don't really know what they're doing. So I was fairly comfortable with what I'd already done. So I moved on from that. Um, I then did my privacy policy, contact us page and affiliate disclosure. Um, they were all in one way or another fairly copy and paste basic jobs. Um, so I managed to do the three of those in a couple of hours. So I've written a boring day, but I'm nearly caught up in the authority site system to where I was before I started it. Uh, and it's been worth the delay because the research and structuring of categories and keywords will be very useful. 4th of November. Uh, I watched the Authority Site System Content Creation Unit, uh, organised the headings for LED interview page. This included further keyword research as the category is sparse. Uh, I found a couple of phrases with volume by removing best. So in other words, checking in Ahrefs uh, Keyword Explorer um, for just LED interview rather than best LED interview. Um, I then wrote the page about the wisdom of the crowd, um, which is an explainer about how some review pages, some, some roundup reviews I'm going to be doing on the site are going to involve reviewing products that sell on Amazon and due to not having the time or inclination to actually buy the products and test them myself due to there probably not being enough money available by doing that to justify doing it, I'm gonna be relying on Amazon reviews to get the information together to um, sort of, I'm gonna be collating reviews essentially in order to create reviews. Um, and I didn't want to do that pretending I wasn't doing that. Um, and I've seen a couple of examples of other successful sites stating up front that that's how they do things. Um, so I decided I wanted to do the same thing. Decided to call those types of reviews the wisdom of the crowd reviews uh, and uh, therefore wrote a page explaining what that is and how I'm going to collate those reviews. Um, I think that was it for that day. Okay, so on to the 5th of November, which is an important day uh, for, a, well, a couple of reasons, actually. Uh, partly because, as I've noted here, I spent the first three hours of the day constantly refreshing Arizona on Twitter. Uh, and if you don't understand why, uh, you need to Google the 11th, uh, sorry, the 5th of November 2020, and I'm sure you'll be reminded uh, it's now the 6th and I still don't actually know for certain uh, how that's all going to work out but it's certainly been uh, edge of the seat stuff for the last 24 hours or so. Um, obviously it was also uh, bonfire night in the UK uh, and my cat disappeared uh, so a really um, busy day in various ways but the main thing that I want to address is that, well I'll start from the start. So I've written that I took ages to recognise that the whole LED, best LED interviews category um, 
was a highly technical first ever article to write for the website um, because I discovered that it's actually to do with how to light interviews and uh, the lighting of TV interviews is not basic stuff that you can just write about uh, in sort of a couple of hours having read a couple of articles on the internet or at least you could but the quality you would output would be nothing like good enough for the type of people who are reading about how to light TV interviews to respect or care about. Uh, so I decided to start a folder of categories that will require an expert. Uh, I then moved on to um, the the second lowest competition category that I'd, I'd identified, which was um, best LED anemones, believe it or not, um, all to do with how to use LED lights to um, maintain anemones in um, tropical aquariums. Tropical? Maybe not, just aquariums. Um, and in the fact that I don't know whether that has to be a tropical tank or not um, is important because, again, I recognise that even this was going to be too technical to write about with authority quickly. Um, and being having two negative results in the first two categories I looked at with regards to this sort of technical outlay versus the potential earnings of the article um, was uh, an interesting realisation. So as I've next written, uh, I had a major freak out about the entire basis of the project being the cross niche term LED um, because <clears throat> It means many different areas are covered and you'll need knowledge about every single one to write well. Uh, also, LED, the phrase, <coughs> might go out of fashion as it becomes increasingly standard for lights to become LED lights. Uh, people might stop using that phrase and just calling them lights. Um, so before I move on, just to explain the first point there. Um, I knew when I first started thinking about LEDs that it was a cross-niche term, and what I mean by that is if you're writing about uh, fishing, to, to mention the previous example again, um, everything you're going to be writing, pretty much everything on your website is going to be to do with the process of fishing. Whereas with LEDs, they are not... Uh, uh, an industry in their own right, really. They are more like things that are used across a set of industries. I guess there are companies out there who purely sell sort of LED lights uh, generally um, to tradespeople who might argue that LED lights themselves are an industry. I guess they kind of are, but that's a fairly narrow uh, vertical Realistically, LEDs are things that are used across various industries. Oh, the cat's kicking off. Um, so I initially convinced myself that was a good thing because it meant that I could build up a website which has, in the eyes of Google, hopefully, relevancy around the term LED, which would mean I could then move into all those different verticals in which LEDs are relevant and used. Um, quickly, you know, on the basis of a website that is already uh, gaining some traction in Google for that term. But as I started to plan these articles, um, it occurred to me that that, you know, was as likely to be a problem as a benefit. Um, because, well, firstly, for the identified fact that uh, I would have to be writing in every single article, not just about LEDs, but about a sort of partner term. And the partner term was not necessarily something I was going to have any knowledge about. So that was going to be tricky. But then in terms of the authority and relevance thing too, it also means I would be competing with sites for every single article, uh, which were authorities for the term which was not LED in um, the phrase that I was writing for um, and that that means certainly for a lot of categories I might have been up against quite big authoritative sites so if what I'm explaining is a little difficult to follow I'll just give a quick example <coughs> um, there is a an industry around equipment uh, hydroponics basically equipment for growing plants 
Um, and I, I suspect that it's become a lot more popular um, due to the relaxation of laws around cannabis in the States over the last few years because indoor hydroponic growing is the main way of growing uh, cannabis plants. So a lot of the lighting equipment that you need for that is LED based or at least it can be and therefore there's a big crossover in that niche of LED based growing equipment. Um, so LED grow lights is a phrase that I would have ultimately been writing for. It's one of the categories that I had down. Um, and it's the one is one of the ones that I'd looked at the competition for. And there was quite a lot of competition from sites that were not to do with LEDs, but they were to do with uh, hydroponics and therefore had articles about LED lights for hydroponics. Um, so that's just one example where I would have been up against these sites that had a fair bit of authority for stuff to do with growing. They didn't have authority to do with LEDs. I would have had authority to do with LEDs, but not to do with growing. And like I say, that could have worked out well. Maybe I would have uh, got a, a rankings boost because it's, it's conceivable that Google would have liked the, the fact that I was relevant for LEDs more than the fact that they were relevant for growing, but you never know, it could have gone the other way too. Um, so, I did a bit of Google Trends research and was reassured with regards to the usage of the phrase LED. Um, I won't explain the searches that I did, but I compared a few bits and pieces and came to the conclusion that people are still using the phrase LED and it doesn't look like it's going out of fashion anytime soon. That doesn't mean it never will, but it looks steady for the time being. Um, I've then put that I decided to niche right down to LED panels and other stuff that supports the real world objectives I've got in the long term about hiring out LED screens, uh, video walls, and possibly doing installations. So that was my ultimate reaction that day to this whole worry about the cross niche LED thing uh, was to basically decide to not do it as a cross niche thing anymore or at least not in the short term um, and to just pick a couple of those categories um, and go with them. So that was quite a big deal really, you know, because for for a couple of weeks I'd been convincing myself that what I was lining up to do here was create uh, a a content site which was constrained by being to do with LEDs but was going to be as broad as it's possible to be within that limitation which would have meant considerable breadth um, but by the end of yesterday I decided that that wasn't happening and that I was going to concentrate on something really quite um, narrow instead um, at least to the point where I'd um, written just about everything that is possible to write within that narrow niche um, and seen how it would perform uh, with a view to it being the right kind of stuff that means um, if I if I wrote everything that was worth writing for that sub niche and then wanted to expand I would have set myself up to be able to expand into real world stuff rather than having to just go into another LED subcategory um, okay, so that's the end of my notes for yesterday and I haven't written the next bit uh, that is relevant um, on today's notes. I think that's because I um, just haven't had time today. So yesterday evening uh, I was thinking about this more and came to what I think is a better and in fact really good conclusion about what I should do. So. In fact, let me just stop this for a second. So having decided to just uh, concentrate on one subcategory, I spent a bit more time thinking about what that category should be and decided that, well, actually recognised that there was a fairly obvious uh, choice which um, had just eluded me because I'd sort of had my... I, I wasn't seeing the wood for the trees uh, having come up with all these categories. Um, and, and that is that I've got an, a genuine weird obsession about projectors 
strangely. I don't know why. I just think they're kind of cool. I think there are lots of things that I want to try and do with them in theory around <clears throat> advertising, link building, um, growing a business in general. And I just think they're cool bits of kits. I've had a projector for years that I occasionally use to watch films on. Um, and I think it's a, a really good alternative to a TV that surprises me that more people don't use them. Um, and LED, LED projectors are totally a thing. They are, um, I think, certainly one of the major um, technologies that they use in projectors. I think these days they are the predominant technology. <coughs> So that made me realise that I could actually pick a sub niche which I was genuinely interested in, had considerable volume attached to um, relevant keywords, and having done a quick bit of research around it today, uh, I've seen that Ahrefs predicts keyword difficulty for some fairly juicy phrases uh, as being, well, fairly low, surprisingly low, to be honest. Um, so there is definitely something to go at there in terms of a content slash affiliate site to start off with. Um, so that is the the news of the week, really, um, which is kind of, feels like quite a big deal to me because I've spent these last couple of weeks kind of getting almost a little bit ground down and intimidated at the thought of doing everything to do with LEDs, uh, not least because there were an awful lot of categories out of the 306 that I knew nothing about and had no interest in writing about. And I know in theory you don't have to be interested in it because um, you can get people to write it for you if you've got a bit of revenue or you can just get your head down and do the work that needs doing irrespective of whether you like it or not. But I wasn't loving the prospect of it. Whereas I am genuinely excited about getting stuck into stuff around projectors exclusively. Um, so that feels good. Okay, on to today. Um, I have, because of this change of mind, had to revisit the, um, the keyword research side of things. Um, so I just, I've been searching in Ahrefs for um, LED projector terms. Uh, that came up with a list of 14,000 this time. Um, I didn't want to ask Deck for his help again because he'd done me a favour the other day and I didn't want to bother him. And the list was 14,000 results this time rather than 33, so it was a bit more manageable. Um, it's therefore been a little bit like pulling teeth today because I've had to manually get that full list of Ahrefs with a maximum um, report of 1,000 results. Which means that I've had to pick a, a word that um, exists within the 14,000, um, search for LED projector plus that word, um, and assuming that creates a list of less than a thousand, which is my reporting limit, um, export that report, then add that additional word to an exclude list. So in other words, it takes it off the 14,000 list. Um, and therefore, and, and just repeat that process with a different word each time until the 14,000 was chipped right down to uh, 2,000 or just under 2,000, at which point you can create 2,000 result reports um, just by ordering the outstanding results um, by volume increasing and then by volume decreasing. Um, so that wrapped that up and then I spent a couple of hours adding all of those exported CSV files into one Google Sheet, which is now basically done. So that was kind of horrible, you know, having spent two and a half days doing it um, earlier in the week um, to sort of do it again. Um, was a pain in the bum, but there you go, it's done. And I, I mean, you know, I'm not going to make a definite prediction that that'll be it now that I've made my mind up and, and that is a done deal, but I think it probably is. Um, and <clears throat> whilst I, I like projectors and uh, stuff around that niche, um, I'm not terribly technically knowledgeable about it. So when I start writing next week, um, I will have to it will be from the basis of not that much knowledge, 
but that's fine because I'm kind of into it. And also because it's just that niche that I'm going to be researching it, I'm going to approach it like it's a thing that I am learning. So if it takes quite some time to write the first 5, 10, 20 articles, as I actually learn about the technicalities of projectors and LEDs and the technology around them, <clears throat> that's okay. I am in this for the long haul, uh, so putting some time into learning it is no problem at all. Um, and obviously as I do learn, I'll speed up and be able to write more authoritative expert type articles. Okay, that's it for today and I'm a little bit late so I'm going to dash uh, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. The 9th of November. And yes, that is a bit weird if you've been paying attention because at the start of this section I said it was the 6th of November and it was back then. Um, but after I finished those first um, few day by day updates, um, I was meant to be filming the introduction, wrapping it all together and publishing it. But the fact is, I'm working in this little room in this house that is currently getting re renovated and um, builders make a lot of noise and it kind of makes things difficult to get done. So I didn't manage it that day and then time rolled on and it's actually a week later now, it's the 13th of November and I still haven't filmed the intro. So I'm going to catch up on this week and then do the intro and hopefully I'll have it out on Monday. So, uh, the 9th of November, uh, nothing happened. I had to stay at home and look after my ill kids. They were actually ill that day rather than just awaiting a COVID test. Um, so, there you go. Uh, the, oh, hang on, stop there. In case you're wondering, the reason I stop, said stop there is I'm trying to get better at breaking these videos down into sections in terms of stopping and starting recording uh, just so that I can have a quick read of what I'm about to say and therefore perhaps speak uh, a little more quickly and with a degree more clarity um, just is slightly better uh, I think in terms of quality than just doing it on, in one take. Um, so that was that. Right, uh, so the 10th of November I built and categorised the keyword list around simply the term projector. The idea being to use general projector stuff uh, to create informational content uh, to support the more uh, commercially minded LED projector content. Um, and just to make that clear, LED projector is a considerably lower volume phrase than just projector. So if you're looking for uh, kind of fun or informative or interesting informational content to write and you're basing your searches around the phrase LED projector. Uh, there are some things but you're going to struggle uh, greatly compared to if you're doing the same kind of search around just the term projector. And since the two are clearly very very tightly semantically related I figured it would be no problem if I found stuff to write about that didn't specifically mention LED, as long as it was all to do with projectors, it would still um, be quite good supportive content for um, monetized content around LED projectors specifically. Um, I then finished that or got most of the way through it and got all excited about putting pen to paper uh, creating some of that informational content. Um, so I then researched and wrote for an hour or so on the phrase, make a projector without using a magnifying glass, um, which cropped up in this search that I did as one that had quite good volume, wasn't too difficult to do. Um, and as it happens, it looked like it was quite a fun uh, thing to do, essentially making a projector. Um, <clears throat> so I put a bit of time into that before recognizing that um, in order to do it properly, I would need to know every relevant phrase around that phrase. Um, so I actually put it aside temporarily and went back to research. What I'm going on about there is the fact that um, I don't really want to just take one phrase that's cropped up, write an article all about it, and then um, publish it and move on. It may well be that there are other phrases that are essentially synonymous with that phrase, albeit with slightly different words, or if not synonymous, then closely related enough that you probably want to use them in the same article as subheadings or in the body text, um, or at least you want to be aware of them. So if you decide you're not going to include them, you can do so consciously. Um, 
so I went back to do that research rather than just sort of banging out that article. Uh, I then came to the conclusion that it might make sense to target projectors in general rather than LED projectors specifically. Um, so that, that's quite a big thing to, uh, for me to just mention by way of a one sentence note at the end of that day's work. Um, but I can tell you with another three or four days hindsight that I ended up thinking about that a fair bit and I haven't changed my mind. In fact, I've decided that that is absolutely what I'm going to do. So I know these changes almost feel like they're coming a bit thick and fast, but the truth is, you know, I'm, I'm still in the starting stages of hopefully setting up what is uh, going to be a company to last me for many years. And whilst it's a little frustrating, I kind of don't mind the fact that I'm really iterating my way through these sort of realizations and choices um, because I want to build this on good foundations uh, and I won't let myself annoy myself and rush myself through these kind of um, decisions. So I thought about this uh, a while more that evening and just decided that um, I like projectors, <laughs> is kind of what it was largely based on. I have this strange and uh, lasting um, kind of interest in projector technology. I, I know that makes me sound weird, but I just think they're kind of cool. Um, like stretching back to about, um, it was probably about, well, it was about 2010 that I actually bought a projector for myself to use at home for the first time. I just think it's really, uh, fun uh, the way you get to buy something for not even that much money two or three hundred uh, pounds dollars whatever hook it up and you get something that is four six eight times the size of a tv uh, for way less money and um although obviously the picture isn't quite as incredible as a backlit television picture um, it, they're still really good and uh, I just I think it's um, a, a good technology for around the house but then um, a couple of years later I had my first little business up and running um, doing removals and I started toying with the idea of using projectors for um, advertising the business and um, I won't go into this too much here uh, I may well write about it properly another day but essentially I uh, projected onto the sides of the vehicles that I was using for removals a few times and I messed around with the idea of putting acrylic sheets in the back of vehicles and then doing sort of reverse projections from the inside of the vehicles out um, again to advertise the company um, and thoroughly enjoyed doing all that kind of thing and then ever since it's been in the back of my head that if I got the opportunity I would like to do more experiments around that sort of thing and obviously if I'm uh, running a business that is centered around projectors um, opportunity will abound. Um, not that doing LED projectors specifically would uh, mean I couldn't do that uh, but I just decided since my interest was in projectors in general um, it might make sense to have that as the sort of base keyword of the business if you like um, and also I think that was the initial change of mind was simply brought about by that bit of research that I've been doing which just showed that if you search for projectors rather than LED projectors there is just a wealth of interesting stuff that people are searching for and that you can create content around um, versus for LED projectors where there's a fair bit of um, stuff out there with buyer intent in terms of key phrases but uh, when it comes to more interesting things uh, not so much I guess because if you're looking for something interesting like um, Oh, I don't know, how do projectors work? Uh, fairly basic, but obviously there's going to be quite a few people out there who will be interested in the answer to that. No one's likely to care too much. Hmm. I was just going to say, they're not likely to care too much about specifically how does one technology or projector work. But actually, that's probably a bad example. If you're the kind of person who's interested in how projectors work, you're likely to be quite interested in the specific technologies. But you get my point. In the broader niche of projectors, um, there is 
uh, a lot more cool stuff to write about than just when it comes to LED projectors. So on to the 11th of November. Um, and having sort of locked in this uh, decision that I was going to cover projectors in general, I then had to do a bunch more keyword research and organising and categorising, which I have to say, I really had to grind that out because whilst I was happy with the decision I made, in just the last three or four weeks, I've now done big sessions on LEDs in general, then LED projectors, and now projectors. And each time the work that I'd done previous was almost completely redundant. So having to do it kind of for a third time was, it was a bit of a grind. Um, however, the good thing was I pretty much got my thoughts in place and my systems in place so I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and uh, with one bit of preparatory work first which I'll just mention uh, which was the creation of a keyword research template spreadsheet um, where I, I just took the the bits and pieces I've been doing over the last few weeks and, and took the, the columns and the formulas and stuff that I've been using and thought were good and um, collated them into one template, including, for example, a column of <coughs> Ahrefs volume figures divided by keyword difficulty figures. Uh, so for every phrase, I would get an understanding of um, A combination of what has got volume and is fairly uh, easy to go for, low difficulty. Um, and oh, and I also uh, perfected the if string uh, using the regex match um, formula that I think I mentioned previously as a quick way of helping me to um, find groups of keywords. Uh, yeah, groups. Within the, uh, within the large lists. <clears throat> so with all that in place, in the space of only about a day and a half, um, I went through all of the questions that Ahrefs could find under the broad phrase projectors, um, and then also put together a sheet of uh, everything they could find using the term, the words best and projectors. So I ended up with a long, a fairly long list of uh, phrases that lend themselves to writing interesting or fun or uh, informational content essentially around projectors in general um, and then also uh, a fairly substantial list of very commercial intent uh, affiliate marketing friendly stuff around best projectors. So, um, like I say, it was a bit of a pain to do that bit of work, so hot on the heels of similar work for now defunct phrases. But it was nice to get it wrapped up, and uh, as I wrote here, I felt at that point like I was ready to go with content. 12th of November, um, I started off by writing, hilariously, Within the first hour of research into an informational article, uh, I've discovered there is no such thing as an LED projector. So it's a good job I've changed my mind about that. It seems LED is only the light source and is not actually an important part of the technology. Uh, people are only searching for it either mistakenly or because they don't want to project buy a projector with an old style bulb. So that just goes to show uh, this whole keyword research thing can be quite tricky. Um, I would have thought with my general understanding of, uh, of LEDs and projectors and stuff, mixed with the fact that I've been researching terms around them and reading bits and pieces on the internet for weeks now, I would have thought I would have recognized this. Um, but I hadn't come across the fact that you have um, two or three types of display technologies that exist within projectors and that whilst LEDs exist in most of these projectors, they are not the things that actually create the image, they're just the source of light. So um, it's, it, I suppose it's not quite right to say there's no such thing as an LED projector, uh, but you, you don't really call them that in the same way that you don't call a car with car seats in it, uh, a seat car, it's just a car. And like all cars, it has seats in it. In this case, 
the LEDs on the seats and they're just part of how you make projectors these days. I think the reason why I've been led to believe it probably that wasn't the case is because there is so much out there on the internet about LED projectors. Um, but like I say, I think that's just a bit of a, it's because people are mistakenly assuming that the LED is the fundamental, fundamentally important part of the technology. Um, and it just becomes a bit of a, a vicious cycle. If that's what people are searching for, if that's what Google are gonna um, surface uh, content about and it's also what people like me are going to write for um, whether they know or not that what they're writing about doesn't quite make sense. I've certainly come across a couple of articles since I've made that discovery where what appears to be a reasonably authoritative author is writing either without the knowledge that the product they're mentioning doesn't actually really exist or they're choosing to ignore that for the sake of writing for the consumer. Anyway, um, that didn't change anything for me, of course, since I made this decision a couple of days prior that I was actually just going to involve myself with projectors in general, but it was interesting to discover. Um, then I've written, I then saw that whilst this, meaning the above discovery, uh, is reflected in US Amazon display technology options. So this is if you're on amazon.com and you search for projector or something related, you know they have all the options down the left hand side. One of them with regards to projectors is display technology. The options being DLP, LCD or LCOS. Weirdly, uh, in amazon.co.uk, they actually do have LED as an option there. Um, but I, I just tried selecting it to see what would happen if maybe I'd been double bluffed by the internet and there actually was uh, an LED projector out there where that was the actual um, display technology. But all of the options that came up were actually DLP or LCD projectors that just mentioned LEDs. So I guess Amazon, <clears throat> possibly it's an algorithmic thing. No, it's not, is it? Surely they don't have options based on an algorithm. Um, I think they must have just actually made a human decision at some point in this country um, to add that option there simply because people were expecting to see it. Um, either that or they made a mistake, which would be quite embarrassing. I don't know what that says about the people of the UK versus the people in America. Uh, perhaps that we're a bit more thick when it comes to stuff like that or that we need to uh, have our ego stroked if we believe LED projectors exist. Uh, we, we need to see that tick box. Um, another realisation during this first bit of research is just how many phrases there are going to be out there, which are both highly relevant and do not mention the word projector. Uh, so much material to go at, it's sort of scary, but to be honest, because I'm quite into this whole idea, which I still am, um, it more just feels like opportunity. Yeah, so that's fairly straightforward. You know, I do this, I'm sure everyone does this when they're engaging in a bit of keyword research. Your brain shouts a couple of seed keywords at you and you start researching them and those seed keywords are going to tend to involve the most obvious phrases around what you're thinking about. So in this case, I don't think I've done a search in AF in Ahrefs yet that hasn't actually involved the word projector, which is fairly intuitive and sensible. But realistically, there are often going to be many, many potentially highly useful phrases around the thing that you're talking about, which will are, are you know, semantically highly uh, related. So there's going to be great relevancy there in the eyes of Google. Um, there's going to be good uh, volumes potentially. And in fact, possibly, this very much depends, but there may be an average lower kind of keyword difficulty around writing for things that don't go right for the jugular, jugular in terms of keywords because maybe slightly fewer people think of them and therefore slightly fewer people write for them. Um, but in this case, things like um, DLP versus LCD, um, I don't know if I've actually done that search, but I guarantee you that's gonna be a phrase that exists out there that quite a lot of people search for. Doesn't involve the word projector, but couldn't be more to do with projectors. Um, and 
I'm, it will certainly have good volume and that is exactly the kind of thing that I'm going to be searching for in the future uh, with a view to writing something about it. So uh, not exactly a mind-blowing realisation that one but it's good to just have these thoughts occasionally and perhaps write them down just so that at some point in the future you get reminded of that and actually do some work around it. Um, I then, oh, actually bought a couple of projectors on Amazon, uh, one DLP, one LCD, uh, because whilst, as previously mentioned, I'm kind of into projectors, I quite like messing around with them, um, I haven't really learned that much about um, the, the technology yet, um, and if I'm going to become the owner of a website that's all about projectors and especially if I'm going to be very much involved in the content creation which obviously for now I definitely am but I think even if this company grows and I end up buying uh, paying for writing to get for content creation to get done um, I, I think I still want to be very much involved in it um, and as such I kind of need to start moving towards a little bit of expert knowledge so I bought a couple of projectors. Oh, and also um, I I chose a couple that uh, will probably form the basis of a number of articles to do with reviews and comparisons and other bits and pieces. So I should be getting them tomorrow, I think. Uh, and then I ended up doing and filming. Oh, this is this is quite a fun thing actually. Uh, I spent the last um, sort of three hours of the day doing this. Uh, I ended up making a projector um, using uh, an old light bulb. Um, so this was going back to the thing from a couple of days previous where I was going to write something for the phrase um, make projector without using a magnifying glass. This was that project. Um, <clears throat> what I was initially going to do was just use a YouTube video I'd found where a guy does this and I was going to essentially write about that video um, because he hadn't created an article to go along with it. Um, so I was going to reference the YouTube video uh, and, and write it up in a sort of step-by-step -step text style. Um, <clears throat> but it looked like quite a fun thing to do and not too time consuming so I actually uh, built one myself. Uh, and then that brings me up to today, uh, the 13th of November, where I have spent most of the day editing the various clips and uh, audio bits and pieces together uh, for that video. So if you want to find it, um, you should be able to do so uh, by just going on the site and searching for uh, make projector without using magnifying glass or something similar and you can see my first ever effort at a, um, a non-built from scratch uh, sort of informational slash fun content uh, video. Um, that is largely going to be it for today. I think by the time I finish recording this it's nearly going to be time to go. Uh, but at least that video is finished and I had written a reasonable chunk of that article from when I thought I was just going to be referencing the other guy's video and some of it will have to go and be changed now uh, but I think some of it will still be quite suitable for talking about my own video. Um, so I think probably well, sometime on Monday that's actually going to be completed and it's going to be my first ever uh, reasonably wordy keyword based bit of content to place on the site apart from uh, Diary of an Entrepreneur and Built From Scratch. So that's quite exciting, it feels like uh, the, the floodgates are actually finally opening uh, as I've been hoping slash threatening to do for weeks now uh, but I, I really am there now, I'm actually starting to do it and I think over the next few weeks it's going to be all about the content which should be great. <clears throat> 